I got to tell you, I'm pretty, pretty amped up about this next segment. As lead singer and drummer for the classic rock band Rare Earth, my next guest helped blend rock and R&B into a hard-driving sound that topped the charts with unforgettable hits like Get Ready, I Just Want to Celebrate, many, many others. Because the music of Rare Earth was very much a part of the fabric of my life in the 60s and 70s. And as a bass player in a rock band back in those days and a radio disc jockey, I was just a fan of their innovative sound. Well, tonight I'm celebrating having him back on the show. Please give a very warm welcome to the one and only Peter Rivera. Yeah. You know, Peter, when you were here before, I think when you left, you said, that Huckabee's a dud, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him one more back. chance. I'm gonna give him one more chance and come back. You're gonna play bass tonight. I am. Okay, we'll be listening. Oh, don't do that. You, uh, you know, I, you've been doing this since 1960. I'm blown away. I mean, yeah. you still love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I really do. It's the, probably the, the main thing in life, you know. What first that and a family. What you know? first motivated you in music? Because you preceded the Beatles. For many of us, the Beatles is what turned us on to rock and roll. My dad taught me spoons because I got hit by a car and shattered my leg. Oh. So he felt bad, so I played spoons. I was five. Mm -hmm. And then when I was 10, a guy, door to door salesman, sold music lessons. Really? And he said, I'm going to test your son. Tell me which note is lower. And he goes, ah, ah. <laughs> I said, the lower one. He looked at my mother and he goes, your son has a remarkable aptitude. <laughs> <laughs> what a salesman. So I took, yeah. I took three lessons yeah. because they were teaching me all this stuff. Uh, and the, the <laughs> fellow was from another country, uh -huh. broken English. And all these teaching me, I thought, no, no, it's Chuck Berry and Duke Ellington. And, there you go. And I want to get back to my dad's 78 records. you know. So I quit lessons and then... Just went from there. Just a failure, Peter. It just didn't work just, out for just, you, that music well, thing. You know, uh, I think it worked out pretty it beautifully. It worked out okay, yeah. Did, did your parents ever say, now, now, Peter, this music thing is okay, but you gotta have something that make a living out of it. No, well, uh, my dad was a little skeptical about it, but when I was playing in the best nightclub in Detroit and I brought my mother and father huh. down, I told the waitress, anything they want, <laughs> give it to them. My dad went, hey, this music's a pretty good stuff. <laughs> Tell me why Detroit, Michigan yep. has been such the center of a lot of American, both rock and roll as well as R&B. You're from Detroit. I mean, you go through the list. It's, it's Aretha Franklin. It's, uh, you know, yep. the Funk Brothers at yep. Hitsville. But it's uh, Mitch Ryder and the MC5 yep. and Ted Nugent. You start, why... Detroit, Michigan. Well, I, I, I don't know how they all got there, but I, I think that the fact that our, our fathers were mostly factory workers mm -hmm. and we didn't have a lot to go on. So what we had was our practices and we liked to get together and practice and practice and mm -hmm. practice. And that's how we came out of Detroit, you know, just playing all the time. You know, in the winter time, it's not a fun place to be around. So you just go to rehearsals and you stay there and, it just kept going, and then we got a job playing at a bar mitzvah, and then we did a wedding, and <laughs> finally went into the club thing and built our way up to the top club of the city. And then we were lucky that Motown was in Detroit. Yeah. So it wasn't too hard to, to have them hear what we were doing. And they invited us into the studio for five days, and we recorded. And at the end of the five days, we had an album done, and nobody played it six months later. It took off and sold millions of records. There's reasons for that. It's a long story, but they eventually played it. Well, I'm glad they did because I would have Motown missed... Motown didn't know how to promote albums. Oh. They just had singles. Singles, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so we kind of had to educate them into that. And then it took off, so... Boy, did it ever. Yeah. I mean, the music of Rare Earth is, is very, very central to a lot of the innovative music that came out of the 60s and early 70s. And... You know, I mean, you hear a rare earth tune and immediately you know what it is. So there was a certain artistry that you guys had. Well, you know, uh, we, we just worked hard and, and uh, you know, had producers and engineers and we just played. Our first album was just the, the most favorite songs that we played in the club. Yeah. Nothing, we didn't know songs we had written. We just did the songs from the club. We didn't know any better, you know. It was just so new and uh, just clicked. 
you know, I'll tell you what uh, is about to click. You're going to go on the stage and perform. I'm going to get to perform with you, and I am so very excited about that. Bass. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So we're going to have some fun. And while I join Peter in the band and get ready to rock the house, Keith Bilbrey is going to tell all of our viewers how they can hear and get Peter Rivera's great, and I mean great, music. Keith? Well, you can find Peter's tour dates and get signed copies of his latest album and see a digital exclusive performance of Trust by going to Huckabee.tv.